Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. My name is Donovan, I'm a first year general surgery resident. I don't know if you guys know this, but did you know that they did surgery on a grape? So today I wanted to talk about my first experiences learning actual operations and starting to operate as the primary surgeon. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity of actually doing my first appendectomy, so removing the appendix because of appendicitis. And of course, I didn't do the entire thing by myself, but uh, it really is a stepwise process where the surgeon will let you do things as you become more comfortable. But basically, because it is an easy procedure, I had the opportunity of doing a little bit over 50% of all the steps with some help. So basically I wanted to talk a little bit about that, talk a little bit about uh, laparoscopic surgery and appendectomies, and I wanted to touch upon the technical aspect of surgery and how that goes into our learning in surgery residency, and if that is the most difficult part of surgery, which some would argue is actually not. So I would say after having performed a few of these appendix surgeries under supervision, my general impression at first is that it is so damn hard. I knew that laparoscopic surgery was challenging because of the angles, because of the instruments and the way uh, things are limited, but I was pleasantly surprised by just how difficult things are actually when you're doing them and not just looking at someone else doing them. Going through medical school, you see a lot of surgeon staff and senior residents who have years of training and they make it look really easy. And I didn't realize just how the smallest things can be a challenge when first starting out. But generally, it was super humbling because this, again, is probably the easiest surgery and the most uh, bread and butter surgery that a general surgeon can perform laparoscopically. And also, it was just very motivating because uh, this is actually a set of skills that I'm supposed to have at the end of residency um, when I'm going to be practicing in the future, which in the past few months, I learned a lot of things that can be applicable, but not so much directly like a procedure that I will need to do. So I practice a lot with my lap box trainer at home. I want to show you guys a little bit because lap box trainers are great, uh, but they don't represent the real thing in many ways, and uh, especially considering the angles and views. And so here, let me show you how I practice and how I intend to change that a little to uh, mimic a bit more these uh, surgeries for appendices. Okay, so this is my lap box trainer that I have in my office that I made and I made separate videos about how I made this box and also just about uh, what laparoscopic surgery is. Uh, I highly recommend you go watch those even if you're not interested in surgery. I think it's really cool. But basically I have my laptop set up up here, a webcam with a small little box and I have my uh, little tools here. And so here's one of the main problems with the lap box trainers that is different in real life, especially for appendectomies, is that um, you're, you notice that the camera is in the middle here and the instruments are gonna be on both sides, uh, kind of making this perfect symmetric triangle when you're um, practicing with these pegs and these beams as you're seeing. And that's just slightly different from doing an appendix surgery uh, because the angle is gonna be a little bit different. So basically the appendix, if you don't know, is at the uh, on the right lower quadrant here. Uh, generally people are gonna have pain, nausea, vomiting, um, if the appendix becomes inflamed and we need to remove it. So um, the best way to access this uh, is gonna be through one port at the uh, belly button. It goes through the belly button, usually with a camera and the light shining through here one port just above the pubis going through the belly and um, pointing again through here and one on the opposite side on the left lower quadrant here that'll point uh, towards here so you'll imagine you have your three instruments all directed towards the appendix to have the best view but the one thing is that the camera is going to be at the top here which means it's at the surgeon's uh, right side which creates the view that i'm going to show you uh, here and what I should really be practicing is actually going through um, the side and having the camera um, on my right. And you can see how these things can be a little bit more difficult because uh, your instruments are kind of coming in from the side of the screen and left and right isn't the same, back and forth isn't really the same. And the last thing that is a major difference is that the camera here is fixed. It doesn't move in the lap box trainer, uh, but in real life, someone is controlling the camera and moving it around, zooming in and out, which makes the view uh, a lot more dynamic. And so at some points, you can be very zoomed in on your instruments and have to move a little bit less to move on the screen. Uh, sometimes you'll be a bit more zoomed out and the motions are gonna be uh, different. So you have to adjust accordingly depending on 
uh, how the camera is zoomed in. And also sometimes the camera can be turned and tilted, which again is not represented here. All right, so here's a uh, very poor uh, Play-Doh schematic of uh, the appendix with its surrounding structures. So this is the uh, small bowel going into the large bowel. This is just a segment and imagine that everything else is attached over there. And at the bottom here of the cecum, there's the appendix, which can be quite long. Uh, and again, this is not necessarily uh, to scale to an adult, um, but I just wanted to show what uh, basically goes into uh, the surgery in very basic steps. So this is the angle you would have uh, looking face on, and I'll explain in a second what these are. But um, usually when you're going with that view, as we were explaining earlier, uh, you would just look at it this way um, and you'd lift the appendix up with one tool like this and expose this part here, which is the yellow is a bit of fat and the red is just the artery that would be kind of inside that fat that goes to the appendix. And so if you were to just cut the appendix through here, you would uh, cut those vessels and uh, the patient could actually bleed. Even if it's a small vessel, the patient could actually um, be quite sick from that because uh, a slow constant bleed is actually pretty bad. So the idea is that you would use your instruments to kind of dissect slowly and make sure you're, you're, you're burning all the vessels and sealing them off as you're going kind of cutting through the appendix like that until you reach um, kind of the appendix. And then at that point, you with the cautery you use to dissect down and make sure you detach it from everything. And generally once it's detached from uh, the blood supply that is here and it's not bleeding anymore from this side, and then you would go in and use these kind of special loops to just uh, block off this portion here so that it doesn't create a hole and connection into the bowel. And uh, then basically just use scissors to snip the appendix off. And then hopefully this uh, seals and heals nicely and uh, you would remove the appendix out of the abdominal cavity and you're left with a little nice little stump like that. And so I'm not really sure what the point of this video is right now, but I think I wanted to just uh, talk about how technically difficult surgery can be. And I know that to a lot of people, surgery does seem like something that is very technically difficult. But to me, uh, going through medical school, surgery was difficult, not because of the manual uh, kind of dexterity skills, but more about the anatomy um, that is different in every person and knowing where to go, where not to go, what things to watch out for. But tying knots and dissecting structures isn't really technically difficult in the pure sense of the word. In fact, one of the surgeons I met uh, during medical school actually told me um, that you can teach a monkey how to suture. It's really the rest of all of surgery that is difficult to teach, which is the judgment of when to operate and how to operate. But I think that laparoscopic surgery is this kind of almost a different beast where there's a lot of uh, basic skills that you have to learn in order to make the most simple things. And so I'm really excited about the challenge. I'm excited to see how my skills are gonna improve over time, how I'm gonna be able to work on things myself at home, and how much um, practice in real life is gonna help me uh, achieve the skills that I want to get at the end of residency. I still agree that assessing patients for surgical conditions and uh, managing patients uh, before the operating room and after the operating room is one of the big challenge of residency, but uh, the technical aspect of laparoscopic surgery really shouldn't be understated. I think that it's something that, that we need to practice um, separately and not just wait to uh, go to the operating room to do. I hope you guys enjoy these updates as I'm learning um, surgeries and learning how to perform these procedures more and more independently. Obviously, as I go through residency in the later years, I'm gonna operate a lot more than I am now. And so thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.